the bowl is bad. Heed my words, all classes of men, you greater and lesser children of Heimdall. You summon me, Odin, to tell what I recall of the oldest deeds of gods and men. I remember the giants born so long ago. In those ancient days, they raised me. I remember the giants born so long ago. In those ancient days, they raised me. I remember nine worlds, nine giantesses, and the seed from which Yggdrasil sprang. It was at the very beginning, it was a mere's time. There was no sand, no sea, no cooling waves, no earth, no sky, no grass, just Ginyukaka. But Odin and his brothers created the earth. It was they who made Midgard. The sun shone from the south upon the stones of their halls and the land turned green with growing plant life. The sun, companion of the moon, shone from the south as the heavenly horses pulled it east to west. The sun did not yet know where it rested at evening. The stars did not yet know their places in the sky. The moon did not yet know what kind of power it had. And then all the gods went to their thrones, those holy, holy gods, and came to a decision. They named the night and the hours, the morning, the midday, the afternoon and the evening, so they could tell the time. The gods had their meeting at Ithavol. There they built temples and high shrines. They made workshops, they made treasure, they made tongs and other tools. They played in the grass. They were cheerful. They had no lack of gold till three giantesses came. Then all the gods went to their thrones, those holy, holy gods, and came to a decision. They would make the Lord of the Dwarves out of Ymir's blood and his rotting limbs. Then they made Matsugunir, he was the lord of all the dwarves. And the next day they made Durin. They made many man-like creatures, dwarves of the earth, and Durin named them. Ni and Nithi, Northi and Suthri, Ostri and Vestri, Othjof Davrian, Birur Barvur, Bomber, Norvi, on and on. I am Yoth Benithir, Vaigen Gondorf, Vindorf Thrain, Frek, Thorin, Thor, Vit, and Lit, Nar, and Nirth, Regan, and Rasvit. Now I have named the dwarves correctly. Fili, Kili, Fonden, Ali, Hepti, Vili, Hanir, Sphir, Fra, Hornbror, Fregen, Loni, Arvon, Jari, Oakenshift. Now the names of Dvalin's family, the dwarves descended from Lofar, as men tell. The ones who left their stone halls at home on Yorval. These were Draupnir and Dalgrasvir, Hal Hagraspori, Helvigan Blo, Skirfirvir, Skafitai, Alfenigni, Oakenshield, Fjallar, and Frosty, Fith and Gnar. These names of the dwarves, the descendants of Lofar, will be famous as long as the world exists. Three gods, powerful and passionate, left Asgard for Midgard. They found Ask and Imbla, weak, fateless in the land. They had no breath, no soul, no hair, no voice. They looked inhuman. Odin gave them breath. Onir gave them souls. Loth gave them hair and human faces. I know an ash tree named Yggdrasil, a high tree speckled with white clay. Dewdrops fall from it upon the valleys. It stands forever green above earth's well. Three wise women live there by that well. Under that tree, earth is named one. Another 
is Vathandi, and the third is named Skold. They carve men's fates, they determine destiny's laws. They choose the lifespan of every human child and how each life will end. I remember the first murder. Ever in the world when Golvig was pierced by spears and burned in Odin's hall. They burned her three times. She was reborn three times. Often killed, not a few times. Still, she would live again. They named her Hyth when she came into their homes of sorcerers who foresaw good things. She knew magic. She knew witchcraft. She practiced witchcraft. She was the pride of an evil family. Then all the gods went to their thrones, those holy, holy gods, and came to a decision about whether they should endure Golveg's depredations or whether they should seek revenge. Odin let a spear fly and shot it into the fray. That was the first war ever in the world. The outer wall of Asgard was broken. The Vanir knew war magic. They trampled the valleys. And then all the gods went to their thrones, those holy, holy gods, and came to a decision. All the air would be poisoned with their deceit, or Odin's wife would have to be married to a giant. Thor alone was in the mood to fight. He does not take it lightly when he hears of such things. Broken promises, broken oaths and vows, such false speech as even the gods have uttered. I know where Heimdall hid his ear, under the heaven-bright holy branches of the Yggdrasil. I see a river that feeds the waterfall where Odin hides his eye. Have you learned enough yet, O oh Father? I sat alone when the Ancient One came to me, Odin of the Asir, and he looked into my eye. What do you seek from me, Odin? Why do you seek me, Odin? Odin, I know where you hid your eye, in the famous waters of the well of Mimir. But Mimir can drink every morning from those waters where your own eye drowns. Have you learned enough yet, Allfather? Odin opened my eyes to rings and necklaces. In exchange, he got wisdom and prophecy. I saw more and more looking out over the worlds. I saw Valkyries come from far away, ready to ride to the homes of the gods. Skold held a shield, and Skolgul another. Goon, Hil, Gondul, and Gerskogul. Now the Valkyries are counted, ready to ride to Earth, the Valkyries. I saw Balder, the bloody victim, Odin's son, resigned to his fate. There stood the mistletoe, growing slender and fair high above the plain. That tree which seemed harmless caused a terrible sorrow when Hoth took a shot. Baldur's brother was born soon thereafter. He was Odin's son. He took vengeance while still just one night old. He had never washed his hands nor combed his hair when he put Baldur's killer on the funeral pyre. Frigg wept in Finsalir and the woe of Valhalla have you learned enough yet, oh father? I saw a prisoner lying in a certain wood, the liar himself, none other than Loki. There sits Sigyn, his wife, even for, oh, she finds no glee in her husband. Have you learned enough yet, oh father? A river falls from the east, full of daggers and swords through valleys of poison. There stands north of the dark valley, a golden hall of the kin of Sindri. And another stands at Oaklanir, the beer hall of a giant named Vermeer. I saw a hall that stood far from the sun on the beaches of corpses 
The doors face north. Drops of poison fall through the roof. Its walls are encircled by serpents. I saw oath breakers waiting in those thick streams and murderers and those who seduce others' lovers. Their nidhogg sucks the corpses of the fallen, snaps them in his jaws. Have you learned enough yet, all father? In the east sat an aged giantess in iron wood. There she raised Fenrir's brood. Among them, and a certain one who bites the moon in a troll shape. Dead men feed their lives to the wolf, and the home of the gods turns red with gore. The sun shines black through the summers. The weather is never cheerful. Have you learned enough yet? Oh, father. A giant, a herder by trade, sits there on a burial mound, striking a harp. He is the cheerful Egtha. A bright red rooster named Fiala sings near him in Birdwood. Near the Asir sings the rooster named Goldenkopf. He walks with men who fight for Odin, lord of battle. But another sings below the earth, a soot red rooster in the halls of hell. Fenrir howls terribly before the doors to hell. The wolf will break its bonds and run. I know much wisdom. I see deep in the future, all the way to Ragnarok, a dark day of gods. Brothers will fight one another and kill one another. Cousins will break peace with one another. The world will be a hard place to live in. It will be an age of adultery, an age of the axe, an age of the sword, an age of storms, and an age of wolves. Shields will be globing before the world sinks into the sea. There will be no man left who is true to another. The giants are at play, and the god's fate is kindled at the blast of Gyala Hall. Heimdall blows that horn hard, holds it high aloft. Odin speaks with Mimir's head. The old tree sighs when the giant shakes it. Yggdrasil stands, but it trembles. Fenrir howls terribly before the doors to hell. The wolf will break its bonds and run. I know much wisdom. I see deep in the future, all the way to Ragnarok, a dark day for the gods. Hiram advances from the east with a shield before him, and the Midgard serpent is in its monstrous rage. The serpent beats the waves, and the eagle screams eagerly, splitting corpses with its pale beak. Nagelfar, the giant ship, is released. That ship sails from the east, bearing giants over the sea. And Loki is its captain. The giants are coming together with Fenrir. And Loki, too, is with them on that voyage. What news from the gods? What news from the elves? All of Jotunheim is roaring. The Asir are in council, and the dwarves, creatures of the mountain, hide and tremble by their doors of stone. Have you learned enough yet, Alpha? Certain comes from the south with a bright light in his hand. Yes, the sun shines upon the sword in his grasp. The mountains collapse. The trolls fall. Men walk the roads to hell. And the skies divide above. Then comes the second sorrow of Frigg. When Odin goes 
to fight the wolf. And Frey goes to fight the giant serpent. And then Odin, Frigg's husband, will fall to the wolf. And then comes the great son of Odin, Vithar, to fight, to avenge his father on the wolf. He shoves his sword into the mouth of Fenrir, all the way to the heart. And thus is Odin avenged. Then Thor comes, Earth's son, Odin's son, to fight the Midgard serpent. The protector of Midgard will kill that serpent in his rage. But all humankind will die out of the world when Thor falls after only nine steps. Struck down by the venom of that honorless serpent, the sun turns black. The earth sinks into the sea. The bright star falls out of the sky. Flames scorch the leaves of Yggdrasil. A great bonfire reaches to the highest cloud. Fenrir howls terribly before the doors to hell. The wolf will break its bonds and wrath. I know much wisdom. I see deep into the future. All the way to Ragnarok, a dark day for the gods. I see the earth rise a second time, from out of the sea, green once more. Waterfalls flow, and eagles fly overhead, hunting for fish among the mountain peaks. The Aesir meets on Ithavol and regard the bones of the Midgard serpent. And there they recall the great events of Ragnarok and Odin's old wisdom. There they will find once more the wonderful golden game pieces in the grass, which they had once played with in the earliest of days. Fields will bear harvest without labor. All sickness will disappear. Boulder will come back. Hoth and Boulder will live in Odin's hall, as well as the other gods. Have you learned enough yet, all father? Then Honir will speak forth his prophecies, and the two sons of Odin, the two brothers, will inhabit the heavens. Have you learned enough yet? Oh, Father, I see a hall standing there, more beautiful than sunlight, thatched with gold at Gimla. There bold men will dwell and enjoy cheer throughout their lives. Then the dark dragon will come flying down from the dark mountain. That glistening serpent, Nidhogg will bear corpses in his wings as he flies over that valley. And now, I must retire. Have you learned enough yet? All oh, well. yet. Man, I was just, I was going to leave the video at that, um, but man, reading the Voluspat in its entirety in that way is something else. I mean, Obviously, I got very into it. I'm, I'm glad I did. That's what I wanted to do. But also, like, there were certain points where I felt like I couldn't control how I reacted. Um, I don't know. It was it was kind of like a it was kind of a religious experience to read it like that. Um, 
so yeah, I would recommend trying that, like, especially with some of the, the stories to actually like, you know, really emulate what's happening. Um, and obviously reading through the stories like that is a really great way to remember them and remember the content that's in there and also realize how hard it is to say like 30 dwarf names and then a bunch of Valkyrie names. I'm sorry if I butchered that, um, to anyone that lives in probably like Norway and Sweden, they're like, my ears are bleeding, but I forgot that was in there <laughs> and I was reading and I hit it and I'm like, oh no, I forgot about the dwarf names and I just did my best so i'm sorry if i butchered those but man um but yeah really religious experience reading the volispa um if you liked this style of video let me know um i did put a poll out basically you know saying hey if you if you want to hear me read stories I, I i'll do it and everyone wanted me to read stories so um if you like this format i'll continue and i'll just start going through all um the poems um slowly but surely um I mean, I have them all as big one. Oh, man, that'll take a while. I need more wine. Um, but there's definitely a lot of stories a lot of people don't know. So I would love to start sharing these. Um, so let me know what stories you'd like to hear next. Um, read by me. And uh, I'll do my best to do it. Uh, but I'm going to get editing. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, until the whole, Scott.